Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3DP. This is the 19th and last episode of the Build the Best DIY 3D Printer series. In the last episode, we finished the adjustments in the hardware of our custom 3D printer, and at the end of the video we had the printer, in theory, perfectly calibrated. Today we're going to make our first prints after installing and setting up Ultimaker Cura. But before starting, be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, you will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Alright, so I hope this episode is shorter than the last ones, since they have been becoming very long, with more than 22 minutes in the last video. To start with today's video, we're going to first download and install Ultimaker Cura. To do it, we'll go to ultimaker.com, and here in software, we'll download the last version available, that in my case is Cura 4.0. So we'll download it for free, clicking here. Once downloaded, we'll install it as we always do. And once we open it, we'll have something like this. I have a whole series explaining the best features in Cura, and I recommend you to watch it clicking here in the top right corner. Ok, so once set, we're going to start by creating our 3D printer profile in Cura. For that we'll go to Settings, Printer, Manage Printers. Here in this menu, as you can see, I already have two printers configured, but what we're going to do is to create a new one clicking here in Add. Now we're going to select Custom FFF Printer, we'll change the name here down below to for example A3DP i3, and we'll click here in Add Printer. A new menu will open named Machine Settings. Here we're going to introduce the parameters of our 3D printer, that we are going to check in the marlin.ino file, configuration.h tab. In the marlin we'll search xmax ports to find the settings we're looking for. We'll set the same values in Cura, so first for x width we'll set it as we can see to 252mm. We'll do the same with the y axis, setting it to 239 and finally for the Z, that we will set to 202mm. Next, the build plate shape is correct as it is by default, since it's rectangular, and we will activate as well that we have a heated bed. Then the G-code flavor will be set to Marlin. Here in the print head settings, we have to set the distance in between the end of the nozzle block and the hot end. It will be useful to prevent the collision of the extruder with other objects when we select the option print one by one. So if we measure real quick, we can see that from the left side of the nozzle, we have a distance of 32mm, that we are going to set in X min. To the right, we have a distance of 36, and we are going to set 36 here in X max. Then if we look at the printer from the side, we can see that the front, we have a distance of more or less 33mm, and we are going to set this value in Y min. Finally for the Y max, as we can see we have a distance around 40 mm, so that's the value that we're going to set in Y max. Then in gantry high, we're going to set the distance from the nozzle to the X axis linear rod, that as we can see is more or less 27 mm. For the number of extruders, we'll set 1. Now in the next tab, extruder, we'll set the nozzle size to 0.4 mm, and the diameter of the material we're going to reduce it to 1.75. Now we're going back to the printer tab to set the start and the end of the G-codes. To set them, I'm going to explain you graphically what the commands do using the commands in the Cura monitor mode, once we connect the 3D printer via USB to our computer. So once here we're gonna close the settings, make sure the A3DP i3 is selected here, and we'll go to the tab Monitor. Here in the right we can control our 3D printer manually, kind of like printer face, but much more limited options. For example, we're going to make an out home of the X and Y axis, clicking here. And now for the Z axis. first command in the start G code that we're going to use will be G21 to set the units to millimeters. If we send it, we won't see any changes, so you better have to trust me. Then we'll use the command G90 to use absolute positioning, and then the M82 to set the absolute extrusion mode. Now we have to preheat both the extruder and the heated bed according to the selected temperatures. So first, we'll use the command N104S Material Print Temperature Layer 0 to set the extruded temperature. Then the command M140S Material Bed Temperature Layer 0 to set the temperature of the bed. 
and then we don't want the printer to move till those temperatures are correct. So we'll use the command N190S material bed temperature layer 0 and M109S material print temperature layer 0 to wait for the bed and the extruder tend to be correct. Once preheated, the printer can start moving. So we'll use the command G28 to make an auto home as you already know, and then the command G29 to make a bed leveling as we said last week. Now we'll reset the extruder distance position manually with the command G92E0.0. And next, we'll purge the extruder, but we'll do it manually. For that, we'll use a set of commands that I will spill in you now. Since the last movement was the G29 bed leveling and the extruder finished here in the back, exactly in the coordinate X200, Y195, what we're going to do now is to bring it here to the front outside the print bed. This point will be the Y00, so we'll write the next command, G1, Y00, F3000.0. Next, I'm going to move the extruder to the left 10 cm from the coordinate x200 to the coordinate x100, moving the z-axis down as well, finishing the movement at z00. All that while extruding material through the nozzle. For that we'll use the command g1 x100 z00 e30.0 f1000.0. So if we send it, as we can see it will finish here, right next to the heated bed. Finally, we'll reset the extruder distance position with the command G92E00 and we are ready to start with the print. For the ENG code, I'm going to use the M104S0 to turn off the extruder, then the command M140S0 to turn off the heated bed, and finally M107 to turn off the fan. And once all is off, I'm going to move the heated bed forward and the nozzle to the X0 to bring the print to the front. For that, I'll use the command G1X0Y235. Finally, just use the command M84 to turn off the stepper motors. So we'll introduce all those commands in the start and end G-code boxes, and we have our 3D printer ready to start making nice prints. For this case, I'm going to use this nice yellow ABS, so we'll have to load it, but before, we're going to create the material profile in Cura. For that we'll go to Preferences, Material and we'll click in the button Create. As a display name, we'll set Yellow ABS, Brand Architects 3DP, Material Type ABS, Diameter 1.75 and now we'll jump to the Print Settings tab. Here we'll set the printing temperature to 235 degrees since it's ABS. If you're using PLA, you should set it for example to 200 degrees. Finally, we'll set the default build plate temperature to 60 degrees Celsius and click close. Then we'll load the filament into the 3D printer. So we'll go to the monitor tab in Cura and we're going to write 230 degrees here in extruder 1 and hit the button preheat. Once it's hot, we'll remove the screw holding this through the idler. Then we'll insert the filament from the top. And we'll push it till it starts going out of the nozzle. Finally, we'll insert the screw back in place to hold the ABS filament. Ok, so once all is set up, we are going to restart Cura and the 3D printer by unplugging and plugging the USB cable and turning it off and back on. Now we can import the 3D model in Cura and start printing it. For this example, I'm going to use the Marvin, since it's small and it will be fast. We're going to select one of the default profiles, for example this draft one with a 0.2 layer high. I am going to check the settings in case I think we have to change something, so we'll click here in edit and the first thing I'm gonna change is to activate the gradual infill. If you want to see what does it mean, you can watch the related episode of the Cura series clicking here in the top right corner. I'm going to leave the supports deactivated and the bed addition activated. Then I'm gonna check here in custom zone parameters, so I'm gonna start from the top checking all the tabs. Ok, so the first we're going to change in the speed tab, I'm gonna lower the speed to 40 mm per second. The rest seems right, so I'm gonna close this menu and hit the button print via USB. I will let you know with a time lapse of the print.
Alright, so as you can see, the print came out with a very high quality. What is really, really great for the first print with our 3D printer. Now I'm gonna show you a little montage with a few prints that I made with this best DIY 3D printer that we have built together along this series. As you can see, the quality is insane. And remember that we built this 3D printer from scratch, what couldn't generate more satisfaction on me. Alright guys, so we have just got to the end of this series, and I really hope you enjoy with me along this long process. I have in mind new projects that I think will be really cool. The first is to design and build a large volume 3D printer, using a Core XY system. Also to create a CNC router to allow me to create more parts in different materials such as metal, wood, etc. And I also wanted to build a 3D printed quadcopter since a long time ago. What do you think about these builds? If you want me to make a new series with them, please leave me a comment with the one you would like me to start the first, and I will start building it very soon. Finally, just remember that if you want to build this great custom 3D printer, you will find the bill of materials attached to the top of the description of every single episode of this series. There you will find the STL files to download and print yourself, as well as the links to every single component to buy from the Amazon store of your country. Again, I hope you enjoy with this series as I did, and be ready for the new projects that are coming to the channel, because they are very promising. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and to ring that bell to be notified when good stuff is uploaded. Hit the like button if you liked the video, leave a comment and share this episode so more people can learn with this project. Finally, I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of you, and especially to our Patreon supporters, for continuing to make this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, getting nice rewards and making me super happy, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking here in the top right corner. Okay guys, so as always, see you in the next